So, um, okay, tell me how many of you find life to be so busy that you feel that there is no time for exercise or hobbies or even for friends and um, a business on the side. So with a show of hands, let me know. Okay. And um, how many of you would like to have some tricks or hacks to, um, to do more and to have it all? Okay, thank you. So while I definitely don't know, I'm definitely not claiming to know it all, I do know a little bit, um, and I'm. <laughs> so my name is Anshin Larue, and um, this talk is I know how she does it. Um, it I got the idea from uh, the book with the same uh, title. I know how she does it. How successful women make the most of their time. Um, and while the, the idea for the book is based on the title, um, the framework is based on the six Ps um, is an things that I use in my own life. Okay, so I want to firstly welcome you all to being here this morning. I know time is, is precious, so thank you for being here and thank you to the WordCamp Cape Town organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. So what does a good life look like for you? How do we all attend to fill the 168 hours of a week. This talk aims to give us some creative ideas and strat strategies for figuring it out and having it all. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be hot. So we're gonna look at, like I said, the six Ps. It's planning, prioritizing, productivity, people, uh, productizing and processes. Okay, so some of you might have seen the slide yesterday, so just a little bit about me. It was about, it was probably early uh, high school that I did my first time manage or time schedule. Um, I wanted to do athletics, I wanted to sing in the choir, um, I wanted to do well in exams, but also go out on Friday nights and Saturday nights with my friends. So I started breaking it all, breaking my work up into um, some sort of time blocks. I used some uh, early version of Excel, maybe, maybe not, maybe some predecessor. And then I printed it out in those old um, printers with the still had the hole on the sides and the rolls of paper. And I always wanted to do it all. So when I had my first daughter while still studying and having a job, I had to reassess everything. And um, needless to say, with more kids and running a business, um, things get really busy as it does for all of us. So I've always been a time management hack or no, I won't say an expert, let's just call it a hacker. So um, I've, I run my own business, um, Simply Digital Design. It's a small boutique website and digital marketing studio, working with photographers and creatives. Um, I'm a, I'm a Word, WordPress community team member, although I'm probably one of the worst contributors, but I do make up for it by running WordPress Pretoria meetups. Um, I was leading the an awesome team for WordCamp Joburg this year, and I also did the Speakers Diversity Workshop. So I'm the mom of three kids. I've got two girls and a boy, and they're all in three different schools. So with all this and all the activities, things and life can get really hectic. Okay, so I've got a few of the, from the book, some quotes, I'll just read it to you. So in 168 hours, there is plenty of space to nurture yourself alongside your career and your relationships. So I, I yeah. <laughs> so I like to look at um, the world and as a mosaic of tiles, and you have the decision to fill those tiles. So, in, in 168 hours, there's actually a lot of time. And there's, if, you know, if you sleep and work for 56 and you um, 
and uh, work for 40, uh, 40 hours and um, uh, yes, I can't <laughs> remember the summer, but in any case, even if you work a lot, there's still a, and sleep a many hours, but there are still a lot of hours to do things if you just look at how many hours you have over a week. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is planning. Let me just... Okay, so we need to decide what we want in life, what's our goals, and not only goals, big goals for business, but also things like small things on your bucket list. What do you want to see? Uh, where do you want to go? If, what do you want to spend time with family or with kids? And then you um, make 90 day plans. So 90 day plans are a really good way to do it as um, it's long enough to give you time to actually get it done, but short enough to stay focused on it. And when you, once you have your 90 day plans, you then break it up into your weekly big threes. And the, that is where you sit on a Sunday or a Monday morning and you decide what three things, if you get it done, will make your, will bring you closer to your 90 day goals. And then your daily big threes, from those plans, you decide what tasks you can do daily, only three. And then also um, with these tasks, as well as the other things you want to do, you um, can have what I call a zero balance calendar, where you decide what to do for every 30 minutes or hour of the day. It's similar to a, a zero balance budget, where you give every rand a job, here you give every uh, hour, every hour a job. Okay. Time is elastic. It stretches to accommodate what we need or want to do with it. Okay, so the first or oh, second thing <laughs> is prioritizing. So once you've got your list of things or your goals, and you create a master to-do list. So you brain dump everything from business and life, and then use the four quadrant framework and categorize the task. So the framework works like this. It's got on the one axis, it's got the important and not important, and then the urgent and the not urgent. So in the <laughs> top corner, there is a, the urgent and important. And these are the type of tasks that needs to get done like really urgently, like paying your taxes, and it's got like a deadline, and if it doesn't um, get done, there's actually consequences. And to, to live the more stressful, stress-free stress life, we need to try and minimize those types of tasks. Then at the bottom left, there is um, the urgent and not important. And these are the type of tasks like responding to emails and uh, working with clients maybe. And um, these are the things that if you can um, automate or streamline or create a system around that, it can really help improve things. Then at the bottom right, there's the uh, not urgent and not important. And these are the tricky tasks that we say yes to before actually seeing if it really helps us get our, our goal. And this is the thing that we need to stop doing and just say no to. And then on the right bottom, <laughs> right top, it's our not, uh, not urgent but important task. And this is the task, the area where you want to focus on. So this is a task that actually make um, like marketing or growing um, your business or uh, creating a new revenue stream. Um, this is that accelerate growth on the long term. Okay, so we have plenty of time. Average over the entire American population, people watch almost as much television as they work. If people don't exercise, it's because they don't want to exercise. Time becomes the scapegoat for all sort of things, which explains the phrase, if you want something done, ask a busy person. So productivity. So the first thing um, is that whenever you want to look at how productive you are, you need to see or figure out what are you doing. And you do this by logging your time. So in this way, you every oh, everything you do, you you almost like you are a lawyer billing um, your time to different projects. So you 
you uh, write down, okay, this time was spent on work, specific work on different areas, sleep, TV, so everything. So there's different ways of doing it. You can have like a paper sheet. Um, I have an example of the one from Laura Vanderkamp's book, um, which she calls the 168-hour sheet. But you can also use Excel or um, if you're on the, uh, your computer most of the time, something like recipe time is a good way of figuring out what you're spending your time on. Then the next concept is from Cal Newport and it's called deep work and it's spending a, a focused time, a bit of time on cognitive um, like re or really creative work. And um, there's different ways of doing it. So there's the Pomodoro technique, which is um, 25 minutes um, and it comes from the, the tomato timer. That's why it's a Pomodoro in, um, I think it's Italian. <laughs> But in any case, it's, um, you spend 25 minutes on a focused bit of one, one focus work and then five minutes to review what you've done or to rest. Um, there's also different, other different um, amounts of time blocks, like 45 minutes with a 50 minute rest or 50 minutes with a 10 minute rest. And I think this is something that you need to figure out for yourself. How, because 25 minutes might be too short to spend on a creative work or a, a, coding or something like that. So then finding a way that will work better for you. And then there's also a point, um, they say the point in past of past and past of diminishing returns. And that is the amount of work or focused work that you can do in a day. So for me, I can only do four of the longer 15 minute sprints. So about four hours, the first four hours of the day before I can't do any more creative work. So then I just need to do things like um, entering content or creating products or things like that. Okay, and then the um, idle week or model calendar is uh, a way to create a framework for you to plan around. So you have like a, and I'll show you mine just now, And um, but it's just a, a good framework to have to know what to do when. And then AB weeks is um, where you have different weeks where you do different things. So you have maybe a client focused week and then the, the next week you spend more on marketing and that works really well. Um, you can have it, you can do it in your calendar like every second week or you can, I just have it as descriptions as mine doesn't always, you know, work, work out like that. I'll say no. Okay, so this is the um, time log sheet, like I said, from the website. And this is an example of my ideal week. So it's a, it's a plugin, oh no, it's a Chrome extension for your Google Calendar. And it just creates a gray um, cal or calendar behind your other calendar. So you can plan on top of this. And then, like I said, I just write in the description if it's a, a, what I do the A week, what I do the B week, because um, I do the A weeks will be when I do a website in a week and the B weeks will be when I don't do it. So it's not always the same. So productivity, we are discovering, is a function of joy. Joy comes not from free M&Ms, but from making progress towards goals that matter to you. Okay, people is the next one. So I've included everything here that's got something, you know, to do with outsourcing. So this can be outsourcing to a team, if you've got, if you've got team members. If you don't, you can start to think about things that you can outsource to maybe contractors on like a once-off, you know, once-off product-based, uh, pro project-based um, things. And, and also like um, uh, getting people on Fiverr.com to do stuff for you. There's a lot of small things that you can get done, like, I don't know, <laughs> uh, creating a presentation or some graphics or social media or things that you really, if you don't enjoy doing it, it's better to, to let someone else do it for you. And I've also included things like meal delivery services. So that we, you get a lot of things like pantry in a box or day to day. And um, um, sometimes these things can be pricey, but if you, if you um, think about it, the, you know, the revenue you can get by not doing those things like cleaning or childcare or other service providers like doing or letting your nails get done. 
um, you need to figure for, out for yourself if this is something that will make sense in your life. And then also support from family and friends. I think that is something that we don't always think about, um, that we do have some support and people are sometimes willing to help us, so we need to grab, grab that if it is available. So in life you can be unhappy or you can change things. And even if there are things you can't change, you can often change your mindset and ask questions, assumptions that are making life less good than it could be. So productize. So I've talked a little bit about productizing yesterday in my workshop. And this is just where you um, create, um, it's similar to a product where you have something that is simple, pre-packaged, pre-defined, and in one's shape and size. So it's a service that you um, create like that, but you need to understand that one's shape and size will not fit all. So you have to have um, like a niche market, or you need to know at least know who you want to work with and solve that one one problem for them. So this one problem will be something that you can maybe templatize or systematize. And like I said yesterday as well, a creative process can be standardized. It doesn't mean that, it still means that the end result will be unique, but the process that it goes through can be a little checklist that you can mark off. So um, in, for product, uh, in productized services, templates and standard operating procedures keep your costs down. It's also faster and more predictable for the client because they know exactly what they're going to get. And that also makes it a lot easier to sell and also easier for them to buy. You don't have to create customized proposals or at least minimize the amount of time you spent on proposals. So examples of this in our industry will be like the website in a week that I do or the turnkey website system that I also have or other things like monthly care plans or monthly productized digital marketing services. And then also, this is something that you can scale easily. It's a lot more easier than custom development. So you don't build the life you want by saving time. You build the life you want, and then time saves itself. Recognizing that is what makes success possible. So the final thing I'm going to talk about, that also did a whole workshop on yesterday, is processes. And I want to invite you to look at processes further than just delivering a service. Um, it can be in work like onboarding uh, new team members or creating a blog post or social media, creating social media. But anything in life can be systematized if you do it often enough. So again, the logging your time. When you log your time, you become to know, become you notice where there is time that you spend, like um, do spend time doing the same things over and over again. So you can then create systems around that. Um, I use a tool called Systems Hub, but you can use anything like Evernote or Google Docs. And if it can be shared by your team members, then it's a good thing. So like I said, write down your processes and see what can be automated. And you can also do, um, if you do a lot of your things on, on laptop, you can do screen recordings. And if you do physical things like you know, making something or packing it, you can get someone to video record you to make it easier to create a system. So I'm gonna end this by asking you, how do you spend the 8,760 hours that make a year? And I'm going to invite you to stop thinking of, of life, of, of, or to start thinking of life as the abundance of hours that it can be. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have any questions for action on the presentation? Sure. Here you go, sir. Here you go. I just wanted to find out what's the process that you Okay, it's called the Ideal Week Planner, if I remember correctly, but Ideal Week, it's, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, folks, if you have a question, I'll come to you, give you the mic. Please don't charge that. Here we go, another question. Yeah, great talk. Um, Thank you.
I just want to find out if you could give us some examples of you mentioned we've got the three big daily tasks and then the three big weekly tasks. What kind of stuff would you classify as being big and how do you go about tackling those things? Because it's often that you can want to leave that to the last minute, it's a bit, you know, you kind of well around in emails or a lot of the low cognitive easier tasks and then you kind of like leave all the big stuff lost. But have you got any advice on that? Okay, so um so these are things that, like I said, that will maybe change things. So for me, for example, I have one of my three big tasks would be like um, branding. I want to re I'm, I've been rebranding my site for like years now. So that's one of my big, big projects. And also maybe like the turnkey system that I create. So maybe I have three tasks for the week or the, 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 around that. So that's big, big task. So, um, it can be writing the content for the site or you know, spending about three hours on um, building the, the turnkey system. So that's, I think it's mostly big picture things and then breaking it up to what do you want to need to, what do you want to do for it monthly and then what do you want to do for it weekly. So um, I use a focus planner, so it's got it all bro um, broken down already, but you can use anything to plan. It, it, is it, does it answer your question? Thank you. Um, how do you handle curveballs? Curveballs. Okay, yeah, so that always happens, you know, especially with kids and, and business for that matter. So that's why the ideal week planner is there to kind of give me the idea, but um, I'm not very strict with that. So it, I, I, if something happens, I handle, you know, I handle that and then start come back to whatever I think. If it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen, then it moves on to the re next day or things like that. It's not a good thing. <laughs> sure. So the project review? Those two that's happened, maybe one or two more questions at the anything you that really want to ask? Yeah, uh, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Um, what kind of things do you need to do to be able to say you can do this that I'm the best at it, so um, I I do like to look at it, in, like I said, not in days, but into the, in the whole week. So I might spend like one whole day till, till very late um, I must spend at work, and then I would try and balance that by um, spending more time with the kids, like maybe on the Tuesday or the Thursday, so, um, or on the weekend. Sometimes it is only the weekend, but then really try and focus um, you know, spending time with them on the weekend. Um, another thing that I do is I try to batch things. Like if I, I don't exercise, I don't go to the gym to the exercise. I play sports with them or I swim with them. or I, So so exercise is always trying to to do it with them. So even if it's just, just dancing or things like that. And there are you know, some other ways sometimes. It's maybe not the best because it's multitasking, but try and think what you can you know, multitask around that, Correct. especially with kids. All right, folks, this is the last question we'll take for this session, but I do encourage you at the last break, at the tea break, in between talks, uh, to approach our speakers and chat to them a bit more if you have any more questions for them. A lot of this day is about networking, meeting new people, so please don't be shy to go and uh, chat to our speakers about their talks. This is our final question, and uh, we will be moving on. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, if you have a project, for example, like a deadline, so for example, we want to launch something new in January, how would you go, like, I find it really difficult to break it down and implement it. So for example, I can go say, like, we need to do all of this, like, it's really long this, but then how do you implement that into a team, like, um, so that they have their emails? Can I put it like that? So, yeah, so you can give the to the people, mm -hmm. so that they also have weekly goals and, like, monthly goals. Yeah. So I use the project management tool like Asana. I know you guys use Teamwork, so it's the same thing. So and I, then I start at the start, try and start at the end and work backwards. 
So um, yeah, I think it's probably the same thing as just you know starting at what needs to be get, get done at that day. So and, and how much time will it take to take to do that, and then um, you know splitting that amount of time among the team members. So I'm not yeah I, I don't know if that's going to help or but yeah I think get, try and look at your uh, project management software and see how much of that can help you, especially with breaking up the hours. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you so much, Dr. Baruch, for your talk. Keep your work